In this video, I will teach you how to make this exact simulation in Blender using just the default Blender fluid physics. As always, it is going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so we can start off by pressing S to scale up the default cube. And this is going to be our domain, which is the border of the simulation. And then go into the physics settings, then fluid. We're going to uh, set this as a domain with a liquid type, so that we can create a uh, fluid simulation. And then for the resolution, which is the number of vertices for the simulation, we can set it from uh, 100 to 200. And you can use 200 if you have a very powerful computer. And then we can enable mesh and diffusion. The diffusion enables us to edit the viscosity of the liquid and the mesh settings gives us a mesh on top of the fluid particles. And then I'm going to set the type to all for the baking cache. And then let's add an icosphere as well. So press number one for front view, press G to grab, and then press S to scale. And this is going to be our inflow object. And I'm going to add some extra polygons as well to smooth out the object. Okay, and then press G to grab. And then we can go in to the fluid physics settings. Fluid, set the type to flow. And then liquid for the flow type. And then we're going to start off with inflow, so that water flows in with an additional number of uh, substeps to increase the quality. And then I'm going to uh, make the initial velocity negative on the z-axis so that it sprays down. And then you can save the project wherever you want on the computer. And then we're going to animate the flow behavior from inflow to geometry so that it falls down at the end. So press I to keyframe, move one frame, and then set it to geometry. And then press I to keyframe once again. And now that we have the inflow object, we can go down to the bake settings and set the end value to 200 because we only really need 200 frames for this uh, simulation. And then press Control Shift S to create another save and then click bake all to bake the simulation. And after a few hours of baking, you now have a uh, fluid simulation. And then we can press Shift A and add a plane Press G, then set to grab it on the z-axis, and I press S to scale. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, grab it slightly on the z-axis. So press G, then set to grab it on the z-axis. And then we can add some basic lighting. And then we can give it a strength of five, and then go into rendered view, switch to cycles, and then you can press R twice, to rotate the sun freely. And then we can use the GPU as the device. If you only have a CPU, you can just use the CPU and then set the number of samples to 50 because we do not really need a lot of samples for fluid simulations. And then you can turn on the noising as well to remove some of the noise. And then let's make the uh, background transparent, which we will need, especially when we add a background image and then next, we can of course add the background image. So go to the world properties and then environment texture open. And I will provide links to free HDRIs in the description. I'm using the Chelsea Stairs HDRI for this simulation. And then we need to add a material for the fluid. So I'm going to use the glass material. Set the roughness to zero. And then next, you can experiment with the color of the floor. So I'm going to give it a glossy shader and uh, you can make it dark. You can increase the strength of the background image and increase the strength of the sun. So just um, experiment with the different values until you like the results. And then press Control, Alt, Numpad 0 to set the camera to the current point of view. And then let's go to one of the later frames. 
and then select the camera. And then we can go into the camera settings and increase the end value, which increases the range of the camera. And then press N and then lock the camera to view. And then we can go a little bit backwards so that we get everything within the frame of the camera. And then we can set the resolution to 2160 squared. Now, I think I'm going to edit the uh, material slightly and make it a bit lighter. So we can just press Control Shift S to create another save. And I'm just going to uh, make it a bit lighter and make the liquid a bit more blue. Okay, so something like this. And then we can render the first layer of the fluid simulation. So let's set the end frame to 200 because we only baked the simulation for 200 frames. And then you need to select an output folder for the simulation. So uh, click on the folder icon and then create a folder wherever you want on the computer. Create a uh, new folder, give it a name. I'm just going to call it stacking. Select the folder and then give the uh, animation a name for the outputs. And then I'm going to edit the material slightly. And then we can go to solid view before we do a uh, test render. And then go to render and then render image. And in this case, it took 38 seconds to render one frame. And then you can press R then set to rotate the plane slightly on the Z axis. And then we can render the whole animation. So I'm just going to say it one more time. I go to render and then click render animation. And once the render is done, we can continue. And uh, this time we're going to go to the last frame and then select the uh, fluid, go to objects and then converge and convert to mesh. And then we're going to turn this mesh into an obstacle so that we can add water on top of uh, this fluid mesh. Okay, so let's add some uh, fluid physics to the mesh. So set the type to effector, which is the equivalent of an obstacle in previous versions of Blender. And then we can uh, add a, a new domain and just uh, keep the inflow object in the same position. So press Shift A, add a cube, press S to scale, and this will be our new domain for the second fluid simulation. So let's add the domain type to this cube, set the domain type to liquid, and then we can scroll down. and enable diffusion and uh, mesh so that we get the basic water mesh and then set the end value to 200 and then set the type to all so that we can bake it and if you want to you can also enable is resumable so that you can pause the simulation baking and then it's time to bake once again so click bake all and after a few hours, we have the second fluid simulation, which is on top of the first. And then we can hide this icosphere so that we can render the second animation. And then it is, of course, time to add a material for the second fluid bake as well. So let's go into rendered view. And then you can add a new material. You can use glossy or you can add a glass shader. So just play around with the different types of materials and the different colors until you have a result that you like. So I ended up with a glossy blue material. And then you need to create a new folder for the second render. So I'm just going to call it stacking two and then select that folder. I'm going to call it toot two to differentiate between the images when we set them all together. 
Okay. And then you go to render and then render animation. And then after the render is done, we can repeat the process. So go to frame 200, then go to object, converge and convert to mesh. And then we turn this mesh into an obstacle by setting it to the effector type and the collision effector type with a few sub steps as well to improve the simulation. And then we need to add another domain for the last simulation. So press Shift A, cube, and then press S to scale. And then we need to add the domain physics to the cube. So set the type to domain. Then domain type to liquid and uh, whatever resolution you added in the beginning. And then enable diffusion and mesh, set it to all, so that we can bake it, and then the end frame to 200, just like before. And then we can enable is resumable in case you want to pause and then bake the simulation. And after a few hours, we have the last simulation, at least for this tutorial. And uh, we can save one more time. And then we can add a material for the last liquid as well. Okay. So I'm going to use the previous material and then just copy it and make some changes. And then go to rendered view and then play around with the different colors. And then once you're happy with the colors, we need to create a new output folder for this render. Just going to create a new folder. Just going to call it stacking three. Select it and then change the output name as well. And then I'll just do some final adjustments to the uh, colors. And then we can render this uh, animation as well. So uh, let's go back to solid view, render, and then render animation. And then once that's done, you can just combine all of the different PNGs into one file so that you get this animation. And that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and subscribe for more Blender content.